Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 5th December 2023. So first we are going to see Delhi edition of Hindu and we are going to pick out the important articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And I am going to say like in how many dimensions you can think about that topic and in how many dimensions there is a chance of getting question from your prelims and as well as means point of view. So this multi-dimensional approach is very important to clear your UPSC. And why many students are not clearing this UPSC? Because you are not reading newspaper in a proper way. So if you are following this Rathor size uh, current affairs analysis, so you are going to make you learn how to read newspaper correctly and how you can do research regarding certain topics and how can a question will be asked in UPSC. So all these things that we are going to discuss in this class. Okay, don't skip the video. So watch the video until last so that you will be getting a lot of insights regarding this current affairs and you will be knowing like how to read this current affairs. So this is the front page of Delhi edition of The Hindu. So the first topic is cyclone triggered rain brings Chennai to a halt claims six lives. So this article we can connect with GS paper one. So in GS paper one we have geography. So in this geography again we have Indian geography and world geography. So we can connect this topic with Indian geography and world geography because So this is Bay of Bengal. So cyclone originated now in this Bay of Bengal. And now it is hitting the entire coast that is east coast. Okay. So here you can study this topic from Indian geography point of view. And world geography will be having this chapter of cyclones and anti-cyclones. So from there also you can connect this topic. So what you have to read in this topic? You have to study about what is a cyclone. So what are the favorable conditions? What are the favorable conditions for the formation of cyclone? And these favorable conditions will be very important from your prelims point of view. And you have to see about why the cyclone formation is increased in the tropical region. And even you can focus on types of cyclones like tropical cyclones and extra tropical cyclones and even you have to refer the diagram of this cyclone how it is moving so all these are important from your geography and we can connect the same topic with gs paper 3 under which we will be studying about disaster management so why we have to connect this topic with disaster management here you can see claiming of six life so whenever anything which is happening, so if it is impacting the humans, then we can call it as a disaster. So if it is causing no harm, that is not called as a disaster. Right? So here, this article says that six people, they died. So now it is a disaster. So in this context, you have to see disaster management cycle. Disaster management cycle regarding this floods. So what are the steps that can be taken? So whenever the disaster is going on, so what are the steps that to be taken in the future like what is the rehabilitation and rescue operations and as well as reconstruction and after everything is done, so how we can avoid this in the future. So all these things which are important from your disaster management and one more important topic here is, so this cyclone is named as Cyclone Mekong and you have to see which country gave its name. And actually in UPSC means, so there was already one time the question asked regarding the process of naming of cyclones. The process of naming of cyclone. So you have to see this. So all these things are important from this article point of view. I hope you got some ideas like how to read this article. Yes or no? And you may have one doubt like, so where can I refer all this? So you can open your NCRT Geography 11th class book, though there you will be getting about the cyclones. Clear and next topic is about India-US. So it is 
India US can work through differences. So recently what happened? That is down in India US relations. Because US said that so India is planning to kill Khalistani leader in US soil. So because of this there are some clashes which happened between India and US and now these relations are all time low. So here this article says that we can come up with talks so that what are the differences that are present in the relationship between India and US that is going to be resolved. So this is the thing which mainly said in this article. And that's all in the front page so there is nothing much important. And in this city page, in this Delhi page, I found one article which is relevant that is cyber crime cases are increasing doubling day by day which is a thing which said by NCRB report. So NCRB National Crimes Record Bureau came up with a report and this report says that yes there is increasing of cyber crime cases. So what happened so because of improving of science and technology improvement of development automatically that will lead to new challenge. So in the present era so what is the challenge that you are facing? It is cyber crimes. Why? Because many a times we are using these smartphones. So everyone will be using the smartphones, right? So because of that using of smartphones, so we are using some transaction applications like uh, like Google Pay, okay, phone pay like that. So especially because of this transactions, cyber crime is happening. So in this cyber crime. So mostly elderly people they were targeted. So elderly people they were targeted under this cyber crime. So this is very important and we have to see the details of this article. And here you have to understand what exactly the meaning of cyber crime. So what is the meaning of cyber crime and how many types of this cyber crime are there and what are they. These two are very important dimensions that we are going to see. And you can directly move on to the states page. Yes, most of the articles are political articles. So leave them. And here you can see one more NCRB report which says that one third of all who committed suicide in 2022. So these people were daily wage earners and farmers. Daily wage earners and farmers, they are the high percentage who contributed to suicides in India. So here you have to see what are the causes for the suicides. Okay, what are the causes for the suicides of wage earners and as well as farmers. So it is also very, very important. And here you can see, Mekong red alert sounded thousands evacuate in AP. So because of this cyclone, what happened to this leading to the heavy rainfall. So because of this heavy rainfall, the many areas have been flooded. So because of this, actually we are going to see that landfall is going to happen. Right. So at that time, your wind will be blowing with a very, very high speed. So because of this here, if you want to save the life of people, so we can go for evacuation of these people. And if you move in this editorial page, so there is an article which is important. This article is about Venezuela and Guyana. So most of the articles in today's newspaper are based on two to three topics. The first one is cyclone and the second one it is based on this Venezuela, Guyana. Okay, so that thing that you have to remember and especially you have to focus on the map. Map based work is very important regarding this international relations. So leave this locally, it is not at all useful. Yeah, in this news page, there is also nothing much important. And you can directly move on to this world page. Yeah, so in this text and context, there is one article. 
that is the need to transform agri food system so this is very very in, uh, interesting topic because if you are talking about agriculture so we are growing this uh, water intensive crop like rice and also sugar cane so rather than that we can move towards growing of millets which are waterless in center so this is the thing which mainly said in this article and even what are the problems that you are facing in our agri food system which is very much clearly depicted in this article and next topic is number of firs on crime against women in india in 2022 so there are about 4.4 lakh cases and about 51 cases were registered every hour across india in 2022 okay so there is increasing of rate of firs which are mainly filed and next important topic is in your world page so here what happened so venezuela claim guyana region in vote so they came up with this direct democracy tools so they use this direct democracy tool for example referendum and it said that 95 percentage of voters they are in a non-binding referendum and they approved the national territory to territorial claim to a large chunk of neighboring oil rich guyana so they are saying that we have to join in venezuela so this is very very important so that's all so these are the very important articles that appear now today's hindu newspaper and now let us see the notes and if you want to get the notes of this class you can join the telegram channel so the telegram channel link is given in description box so please do join so that you will be getting daily updates and as well as notes if there is any important notification or if there is any important article so we will be posting there so first topic is cyber crime cases cyber crime cases nearly double fraud starts using novel ways say city police so now here the people who are doing this crimes are called as frauders so now they are using the novel way and they are targeting this elderly people for their personal gain so if you are talking about context it says that delhi reported about 685 incidents of cyber crime in 2022 so it is a very huge number so in 2022 there were around 685 incidents of this cyber crime they had been recorded and the number of cases rising as more people are using online play payment platforms like phone pay google pay like that if you are using that then you are most vulnerable to this attacks and if you are talking about details it says that the case of cyber crime nearly doubled in capital region in 2022 so this is according to this ncrb data and police people they are also working hard to come up with innovative methods and to identify these fraudsters and if you're talking about this article which says that cyber crime cases they had been raised or increased in proportion to the number of people who are using this online platform like financial transactions which have increased many fold in the years so because of improving of technology because of improving of internet and because of this uh, Uh, geo etc now what happen people they are showing interest to take smartphones right so in that smartphones they are downloading some apps like phone pay etc and they are using this apps for the transactions so whenever there is transactions or happens it will be very much easy for this uh, fraudsters to get the data and if you are talking about uh, this report that is crimes in india report which released on sunday it said that about 685 of cyber crime cases they are recorded in delhi region 2022 but if you see in 2020 it was less 166 now it has been increased to 685 around 4 to 5 times of increasing of number of cases so if you're talking about what is the meaning of this cyber crime exactly so it is an offense okay which is committed by using computer okay so by using computer they are doing some offense and the goal of this crime or nothing but it is to commit the offense and the cyber criminals may utilize a device to access a user's personal information 
and even they will be talking about confidential corporate data or government data or deactive device for all these things so this cyber crime is useful okay for example to utilize the data uh, users data or to get any personal information for example atm card number for example account number so many people they will be having this uh, habit of feeding okay everything and even i saw like uh, in our atm card so we will be having four numbers as a pin so that pin will be mainly used as a lock screen okay so that also i, I saw in number of incidents and i just locked why did you did, did like this they said that this is the number that i will be remembering for the long time right and next one here is types of cyber crimes the first one here is there is denial of service okay there is denial of service attacks that means these are used to temporarily disable an online service and bring the network down by flooding the sites with traffic from various sources so what happened uh, have you ever watched any movies of uh, this type of uh, frauds so i saw the movie but i right now i didn't uh, recall that i don't recall that so actually uh, what happened so in the one website so they will be getting lot of traffic traffic means nothing but the persons who are using that so i'm so think that's called as traffic so whenever there is increased traffic by uh, artificial method then they will install a malware okay they will install malware so because of that what happened so they uh, hackers they will get access to the our system and next one is botnet so botnets are nothing but the networks of infected computers that remote hackers control externally and remote hackers then use this botnets to spread spam and access to attack other system so as if this botnets are nothing but the infected computer they are the networks of infected computer and that remote hacker they can control externally the system by using this botnets and next one here is identity theft identity theft means nothing but here cyber crime happens when a crime obtains access to user personal information okay so because of this we can see there will be stealing of personal inf uh, information is also seen and even we can register a phone internet account in our identity or organize a criminal activity in your name and you can also claim this government benefits in your name so in this way you can minimize at least to some extent of the cyber crime and next important one here is cyber stalking so what is the meaning of this cyber stalking so cyber stalking it is a kind of online harassment so what is it it is an online harassment in which person is bombarded with online messaging and emails so you will be getting email and if you are clicking on that then you will be giving the access to that so and so hacker and next one is pup is that is nothing but potentially unwanted programs so it is potentially unwanted programs and they are less dangerous than other types of cyber crime but here it is also classified as a malware so actually if you are talking about improvement or important software from your system such as uh, search engine and other pre installed applications are there so here they will be removed by using this pups and next one is they also includes malware or adware and running antivirus software will helps especially to avoid some hazardous downloads okay so try to use this antivirus in your mobiles and next one is phishing so phishing is a sort of attack in which hackers they send malicious emails or urls so if you are clicking that then automatically you will be giving access to them and sometimes they will be having some uh, illegal information so i will tell you about that so next one is prohibited or illegal content so it entails criminals exchanging and disseminating improper material that is very unpleasant for example you can get uh, content like uh, sexual thing or uh, for example pornography and even uh, we will be having some violent films and footage of criminal conduct and even sometimes you will be getting information regarding terror activities and the material which is which is uh, uh, which is mainly promoting this child abuse 
So these are the some important types of cyber attacks. So I hope you understood right. And next topic is one third of all 2022 student uh, to of all 2022 suicides they were related to these daily wagers farmers so it is according to NCRB data. So I am not doing any survey here but just whatever that is given in newspaper so that I am teaching you okay. So if you see the context it says that India reported like 1.7 lakh suicides in 2022. And you can observe like how much big number it is. And nearly one third of whom were daily wage earners and as well as agricultural laborers and farmers. So who are the most vulnerable that is first one is daily wage earners, second one is agricultural laborers and next one is farmers. So if you see details it says that la the latest crime in India report which said that Overall increase in the crimes and atrocities, they are committed against this scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. So even there is discrimination which is going on, but in which states? That is in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Telangana. Our next one here is Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, they continue to figure in top 5 states. In top 5 states, they are continuously seen. And other states where we can see this high incident is in Bihar. UP, Odisha and Punjab regions and this report which also said that if there is any cases of offence, okay, if any case of offence against a state that had also increased the marginally in 2022, so in 2022 even the cases against this, uh, uh, this leaders or against the state or that means nothing but government has been increased and even there is 25 percentage of increasing of cases under this UAP, that is Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. And this one is, there are certain states or UTs, they are nothing but West Bengal, Bihar, Odisha, Uttarakhand, Goa, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Chandigarh, Delhi, Lakshadweep, and these are the states and even territories, they reported zero suicides of farmer, cultivators, as well as agricultural laborers. There is no suicide in these states. And now let us see next topic. It is about Venezuela. Venezuela should not escalate territorial disputes with Guyana. So now let us see what is the background. So if you see the background, if you go back to the history, so the land boundary between this Guyana, land boundary between this Guyana and Venezuela, which has been disputed. There is a dispute between the land boundary between this Guyana and, and here Venezuela. So later on in 1840s, British government has border unilaterally surveyed but not proposed the line okay, on this Venezuelan territorial claims. So actually what happened in, in 1840s itself, British government which had drawn unilat uh, or divided this to unilaterally. Okay, here this proposal line is encroached by this Venezuela now. So the boundary which has since been arbitrated like 1899 the bilaterally agreed upon the following demarcation but it remains in the conflict. And this one is the British line accepted Guyana. It is a current de facto boundary and Venezuela will maintain a historical claim to all territory currently administered by Guyana, the west of this uh, Essequo river. And this Venezuela contends that arbitral award of 1899 about the frontier between British Guyana and as well as Venezuela is null and void. But here Venezuela which is not accepting this judgment. So all these things are very very important. And now I will show you the map here, don't worry. Yes. Here we have Brazil, here we have this part is Venezuela, so here this is Guyana, this is Guyana, okay. If you see here, what is this disputed area? So Venezuela claim along Essequibo river extends 1034 kilometers before reaching this Brazilian territory and why it is uh, claiming that it is very much rich in oil sources, okay, oil resources and hydrocarbon resources. 
And if you see the current status, Guyana submitted the disputes to the International Court of Justice in year 2018. And here Venezuela is not accepting that. So Venezuela is withdrawing from the case. The proceedings are currently ongoing. Okay, so this is about this topic. And now let us see next topic. It is about transforming agri-food system. So this article is important from your science and technology on GS3 and even from your geography point of view and also from your environment and ecology point of view. So please be remembered and please be focused. So if you see the context, it says that what it's saying that United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization that is UNFAO so came up with the ground break report. And this report which published this month, which has laid a bare and staggering hidden cost for global agri-system and even surpassing an astonishing dollars 10 trillion. So here what happened? So this United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, UNFAO, came up with this report. And this report it is saying that from the next, uh, in the, in, from what happened here is, there is hidden cost which is seen in our global agri-food systems. So because of this now we are going to see there is inflation in this food prices. So even if you are talking about this middle income countries like India, the cost they constitute nearly 11% of GDP. So while manifest a higher poverty environmental harm and even that will lead to health related impacts. So whenever we are focusing on this, okay then that will also lead to higher poverty, environmental form, health and health related impacts. So including undernourishment and under healthy dietary patterns of children. And even this report which also blames that unsustainable business as usual activities and practices. So whenever we are going for this unsustainable practices, unsustainable forms of agriculture, then that will lead to escalating of input cost. That will lead to increasing of input cost and that is also pointed to need a transform of agri-food systems. And one way to do it is to go towards this multiple cropping system rather than this monocropping. So we are talking about some important things here. So already we know that in India we all came up with this uh, green revolution in the year 1960s. And we can say it is a great success that led to increasing of agriculture production in India. And from that onwards here, India became the country which is exporting food grains to other countries. So here if you see this article says that Green Revolution focused on marketing of high yield varieties of paddy and wheat. Okay. And they are not focusing on this uh, monoculture. So if you're talking about, if you're going for this type of the things here, so we have infusion of seeds which are purchased from multinational companies. So here if you're focusing on this hybrid seeds, so they have to prepare by this MNCs, multinational corporations or companies. And even fertilizers which, uh, which undermine the seed sovereignty, dismantle indigenous knowledge, systems and the fuel achieved from diverse crop varieties. So actually this article says that rather than growing only this uh, rice and wheat, we can go for growing of other crops. So other crops will be like staple crops, pulses, millets and even we can go for mono, uh, we can go for uh, this multi cropping rather than this mono cropping or monoculture plantations. And we can also go for privatization, okay, and as well as uh, deregulation of agriculture inputs. So that led to increasing of indebtedness among agrarian households. So what happens so whenever we are going for growing of only one crop like wheat and as well as rice. So what happens the soil fertility will be decreased. So whenever there is decrease of soil fertility. So we have to use some external things like using of chemical fertilizers or even natural fertilizers. So here what happens to address that is yes, we can go for monoculture agriculture. Okay. And even if you are talking about what are the procurement policy that is present, so they are procuring only rice and wheat because they can be given under this PDS system. Okay, in 2019 to 2020, FCI procured 30 
357.95 lakh million tons of wheat and around 443 lakh tons of uh, lakh metric tons of this paddy so here because of this we became that india is exporting this wheat and as well as rice to other countries so that's it and now let us see next topic it is about venezuela claim guiana region in vote so this article is very important from our gs paper to point of view i already showed you the map right so if you see this article it is saying that venezuelan election electoral authorities they claim that 95 percentage of voters so how much percentage 95 percentage of voters in a non-binding referendum approved of national territorial claim on huge chunk of re, uh, of this neighboring oil rich guiana so i said want to occupy this oil rich areas in this guiana okay and if you see they conducted referendum so what is the meaning of referendum so referendum it is a direct democracy tool like referendum recall etc okay so referendum it is an instrument of direct democracy so it is an instrument of direct democracy where citizens they get an opportunity of straightforwardly vote on a particular issue so your people they will be voting on a particular issue okay so they are perceived to be the better democratic instruments especially in the modern states where people have a better say in decision making so rather than that here we can go for uh, other methods okay so this is the thing which mainly said and here you have to know about uh, which are the direct democracy tools okay please let me know in the comment box don't forget and that's all so these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper and if you want to get the notes of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box so this is a telegram channel rathod's is classes so we'll be posting this pdf every day okay so if there is any update so we'll be giving you the update in this telegram channel so here you can join this and this is our rathod's is academy youtube channel so please do subscribe to this channel so that whenever we are posting the video you will be getting updates and this is our website Rathos IS Academy so if you have any doubts regarding the uh, courses regarding the syllabus regarding the book list okay so there are some free downloads like NCRT PDF that you can download here so go to the website once and I think you will be getting a lot of uh, things in this website and you can also watch the courses so first you have to log in or register after that you can click on this course list then you will be getting the courses that we are offering so if you want to watch the demo videos so click on play course and three videos will be open without paying a single penny so after that if you like the classes and then you can join this foundational course okay and one more thing here is we are going to start this prelims booster course from the monday onwards so if you want to get the details and the fee will be around four thousand rupees okay and it is going to be started from monday so if you have any queries regarding that prelims booster course so you can contact me on this number 8074765513 and even the new batch of mains answering practice is going to be started so if you are a student if you are facing problem in writing an answer or do you, or if you are not having any content you are having the problem of handwriting or the speed or the word limit so you can join this mains answering course that we are offering in this Rathor size that will be excellent and that will be very beneficial for the students and even if you can't pay that amount of 8200 rupees in one go you can pay in installments okay you can pay in two installments so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this lecture so if you like this class so please hit the like button and don't forget to share this class with your friends and please do subscribe to Rathor's Ice Academy. Thank you so much for watching.